Aquaba. Welcome to Expat Life Ghana. I'm Tony, this is my wife Ayo. We're documenting our move from Texas to Ghana as we go beyond the return. And this video is all about jobs in Ghana or making money online from Ghana and reminding you not to move here without an income. Absolutely. So let's get this video started. We keep getting asked about what job opportunities are here in Ghana. Uh, well, here's the harsh reality. Do not come here without your hustle in place, or at least like a really great plan and a pretty hefty savings account. <laughs> hefty savings account, yeah. We were just at our expat um, meetup, live in person event earlier this month. There were lots of familiar faces and new faces. Yay. But there were some people that we didn't see. What happened to them? The money dried up. They had to go back to the States because they ran out of cash. Yikes. Um, I actually just read that Accra is in the top 10 most expensive cities in Africa. Top 10. It's expensive here. It was uh, number eight for 2021, and that's based on the cost of groceries, transportation, utilities, and restaurants, as well as the rent or mortgage and that is an entirely different conversation. Um, because the prices in Accra for a Western type or style house is just as expensive as buying in the US. Yep, you heard me, $200,000 or more for your home. Yeah, crazy. You can't come here successfully, in our opinion, without a plan for making money. Yeah, if, uh, just, just don't move if you don't have a hustle. If you don't have a hustle in place, Wait until you have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please don't. In this video, we're going to talk about five U.S.-based companies that have a Ghana-based location, yes. plus five ways you can earn money online and base yourself here in Ghana. That is like the ultimate, right? Okay, okay. So let's break this down. First mm -hmm. up, who is hiring here in Ghana? Not going to lie, the job market is tight. Uh, it is really <laughs> tight. <laughs> it is really tight. As in people with master degrees are working at the local fabric shop or driving bolts. Yeah, you can have somebody with a master's driving your bolts. Even as we're listing out all these options for places that have uh, offices in Ghana, you're gonna wanna set these things up before you move. Don't wait to get here and enter the Ghana job market and then try to compete. Yeah, you may even find out that these companies will help you pay for your move. Or, oh, yeah. yeah, subsidize uh, your moving costs. So do the legwork up front. Yeah, I mean, that is a really good point. Some of them will help help pay for you to move, right. which is like, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> even better. So let's get on with it. Number one, US employer with a base in Ghana. Twitter. Twitter just announced plans to open operations here in Ghana, and that means hiring. More hiring jobs, jobs, jobs. Yeah. They're literally actively hiring right now. Right now. Right now. So <laughs> go dust off that resume. Competition is going to be uh, stiff with mm -hmm. so many locals with degrees and ambition, but you could position yourself as someone who knows the U.S. corporate side or that you are someone in a position to be senior staff. And they are hiring senior staff right now, mm -hmm. like senior content partner managers and senior researchers. They are also looking for data specialists and content curators. Yes. So... There are a lot of options here, and you can take action on that now. Seriously, like As in you should right now. do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Next up, number two, the U.S. government. Oh yeah, Uncle Sam. Yeah, and one great thing about having a large expat community here in Ghana is that there is the embassy. The U.S. Health and Human Services have uh, operations here. The Department of State has a presence here in Ghana, and all of those things mean jobs. The Peace Corps has a presence here and it's also periodically hiring and all these positions are typically termed with very decent pay and benefits yeah i mean whenever you're working for the government you know you get yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's all government there, pay right? was always good it's in construction. Always good. it was there are also occasional job openings at u.s aid um as well but those are kind of a little more infrequent mm -hmm. so you have to really keep an eye out for that if you have a longer timeline though that totally works okay. Keeping with a governmental theme, we are at number three, 
there are jobs available in conjunction with the NGOs. The NGOs are non-governmental organizations that are sometimes awarded grants to make systematic improvements here in Ghana. Yeah, I mean, like, they're not governments, but they're kind of government adjacent because they're usually funded through some sort of um, global right. operation right. or initiative. And these jobs are term positions, so the length of them are, are kind of variable. It base, it's based on the project itself right. or the grant. But that's a great way to get on the ground, see if you like it here, and also give back to the country itself because you're making infrastructure changes, mm -hmm. which is great. And that's a, one thing they need here, is infrastructure change. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Let's jump up to pharma at number four Ooh, pharma. with the rollout of vaccinations happening throughout the world. There are healthcare initiatives and GOs that are looking for employees who can spearhead these projects. Even after the new normal is reached post-COVID, there are always initiatives for inoculating Ghanaians for other diseases. Yeah, I mean, like, COVID is not the only <laughs> right, only right. vaccine out there, although it's kind of like the most prevalent and important one right now. But they're always doing these inoculation kind of things, trying to get everybody vaccinated. So, yeah, those things are always are always around. They're always going to need healthcare professionals. For sure, right? Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, number five. Mm-hmm. Oil and gas, y'all, we have to include that one. They are a huge part of the international presence here in Ghana. I mean, huge. Yeah, big time. <laughs> and it's growing. The industry is definitely growing. Ghana has been drilling uh, for a while, but right now, just recently, huge oil reserves have been found. The drilling frenzy is crazy crazy it's on seriously but that also means that if you are more entrepreneurial then maybe now is a great opportunity to do petrol adjacent ventures mm -hmm. you know with all these people who are coming in uh in conjunction with oil and gas you might find that things like help placement agencies or services or other things that you would provide in the states that would appeal to expats mm -hmm. are a great venture to start right now great that could point. be health wellness fitness all those things that cater to us expats mm -hmm. Even things like language instruction Ooh, yeah. or instruction in languages typical to the U.S. like Spanish. They, I cannot find any Spanish like instruction people here. Oh, you got to go to the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> there are not many. So if you yeah. had that as a specialty, yeah, completely. Yeah. Those places, they cater to Americans working here. And um, all are great options. Uh, consider how you can take that U.S. service and apply it here. Yeah, so if you have good services that you provide in the States, expats might consume that here. That's a really good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but <laughs> you have to have your hustle in place before you come. Before you come. You can start building that empire while you are still in planning mode in the States. Because you want that, you want to move to include income in dollars. Right. You know, you, you want to come to Ghana and take the benefit of the conversion. Exchange rate is yeah, so that, important, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you can have that income coming in, it's steady. It really, like, that is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially, you know, that's what we've done is build an online business that brings in U.S. dollars. Or five online to generate income. Five. Yeah, you know, just in case. You have to diversify your presence, right? Yeah. I mean, each of those businesses that we do alone is not that much. But when you put them all together, it allows us to live a pretty comfortable life here in Ghana. Absolutely. And we're not going to tell you to become a YouTuber. No, we don't want to increase our competition. You yeah, there are more options than that. <laughs> Although if video uh, content is your thing, do it. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, we are going to list out five things that you can do online to make money. But Hi. I'm Leo. Subscribe right now. What you just said was actually a great bonus thing, is you can create content that's monetized, like blogs with ads or podcasts using affiliate links right. or video that brings in revenue. I mean, those are all really great options. Mm -hmm. And if the title of content creator is not your thing, writing might be. Yeah. There are so many jobs, ghost writing um, for blogs, or just publish your own book or ebook. Totally. I mean, that, that's like a really, that's... Yeah, if you have a idea. knack for words, like my wife, ah. you may have an income stream waiting for you. My book is pending. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> All right, let's get to this list. So that one was a bonus. Here we are with number one, transcription. I have to say hi to my mom 
Hey, Nana. <laughs> she worked go. in medical transcription for over 20 years and will still tell you to this day that it is one of the best ways to work from home anywhere that you are and earn really good money. Absolutely. Now, with the rise in digital content, especially podcasts and video, there is a need for transcribing for those uh, closed captions. Yeah, absolutely. Although there are digital options, they're not always super accurate, so manual reviews are still a thing, and they pay well, like 15 to $20 an hour. Yeah, and it's like you're, you're almost just reading to make sure everything is accurate and editing because most of these uh, companies are layering the digital option on top of the real person, which is not bad. And you can have flexible hours which the, with this, which means that you can work when you have time, mm -hmm. and also that the time change difference is not impacting you so badly. You can kind of you can work during regular hours and not have to work during U.S. hours from Ghana, so yeah, that's nice. That but sucks for our lives. I know. Like, Sometimes you're like, I gotta go to work. It's eleven o'clock at night. Right. <laughs> that actually happens to be more than I would like to admit. Mm -hmm. But remember, you just need to have a really good command of the English language to do that job. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, number two way you can make money online, no matter where you live, is crowdsourcing. Yeah. Sites like Fiverr or Amazon MTurk allow you to work small jobs and earn in dollars. What's more, uh, especially on sites like Upwork and Fiverr, is that sometimes um, those positions translate to part-time steady work. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people who will go to Fiverr and find somebody that really does a good job, mm -hmm. especially with things like marketing, social media marketing, and once they find a person who's really good, that is their go-to, and they end up employing them yeah. like part-time or better because they're always going to the same person. They know that it's good. So if you are offering gigs like your work, you may find that you have really steady income doing it this way. Number three, website testing. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that is not a thing. You just <laughs> made that up. <laughs> You can make money testing sites for some pretty major companies. That's crazy. The only thing you have to remember with that is that you have to have your VPN in place. Yeah. Like the one we have listed in the show notes below. Actually, no matter what company you're working for, if you are doing things online, you are going to need to have that VPN set up so that you can secure your connection and show an American IP address. Mm -hmm. So if Ghana is in your future and you are going to be working in any capacity online, set your VPN up exactly. before you Get come. That VPN. Let's ask y'all a question. Um, what job so far sounds the best to you? Which job? I don't know what you said. Um, CEO of a whole company, <laughs> of course. But uh, uh, yeah, you gotta work up to that. Drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Okay, number four, online tutoring or teaching. This is where I have the bulk of my online income. You can teach English abroad, teach classes virtually, tutor, or you can offer courses based on your area of expertise, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So the list is almost endless. Yeah, I feel like that could be a video of itself. It probably could be. There are literally a ton of options here in just this small little arena. Listen, mm -hmm. if you want us to talk more about this topic specifically, drop a comment down below because uh, we can do that. Yeah. The biggest thing is you can earn $20 or more per hour. Yes, you can. And that's really nice when you're making that kind of money. Yeah, and you have a bad. schedule that works pretty flexibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to number five, print on demand and drop shipping. I know you probably heard this already, but it actually is not a bad little side hustle. Mm -hmm. If you want to make your own income stream and not really work for anyone else, then you should consider retail sales. With the online marketplace Dragonaut, there's no reason you can't carve out a little corner of it for yourself. Yeah, there might be like a little teeny tiny corner of Amazon that mm -hmm. you could kind of reserve yeah. for yourself. <laughs> All right, that was a lot. I feel like we put out, that, that's 10 really good ways to earn income. Yeah, we didn't even start talking about the entrepreneurial yes. um, opportunities that are here. That, I mean, it was a lot. Um, and we didn't just pick, uh, for us, we didn't just pick one of these things. We stacked several of them on top of each other to make our income. And it took us about oh. five years, right? right? Like about five years to know that we were making enough income that we felt like we were ready to move. Because mm -hmm. this is not a get rich quick scheme. No, not at all. At all. And we are still actively working here to build it up more and feel more comfortable. Yep. 
But that U.S. income was an essential part of us moving here. Yes. So if you don't have a hustle set up at all, do not get on that plane. You need to have income and revenue to live the life you really want here. Or you can start a business here that you set up yourself. Like you can be an right. entrepreneur, but that's going to require some extra savings and a hefty upfront investment in most cases. I want to start talking with some of our viewers who are in Ghana and have started their own business to feature them in a video. Oh, okay. So you hear that? If you are an yeah. expat in Ghana who has started a business, then reach out and let us know. We want to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Head over to the website at expatlifeghana.com and get in touch. Subscribe now so you don't miss us featuring others who are making money from starting their own business right here in Ghana. They might not want to share. There'll be like too much competition coming out of the work. I think in that video, I'll have to give some more entrepreneurial ideas that okay. are out there. That sounds good. Outside, so of, outside of what they're doing. Subscribe so you don't miss it. You don't miss it. Absolutely. With that, Charlie out for now. We, we should tell a joke. Do you have any good jokes right now? I have a joke. Oh, you have a joke. Okay, I'm ready. What's the difference between a snowman and a snow woman? <laughs> I don't know what's the difference. Snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that from your six year old? Oh my god, <laughs> terrible. It was funny. Because he didn't get it. Uh, oh. <laughs> Don't tell that one, it's cool. I don't like, when he's 10, he'll be like, oh, hey, get that joke oh, now, stop oh, all, see? Do not tell that through, okay, so you're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how long you've had that booger hanging from inside your nose. You can't see it from up front, right? You got a bat in the cave, like, right there. Bat cave, bat cave. I won't include that in outtakes, I promise. Yes, she will.